Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since my last SSD review, but I recently saw great deals on this M.2 SSD by Kingston and so I decided to buy one to review since it should be one of the best PCI Express 4.0 SSD on the market that can even rival one of the best ones on the market such as for example the Samsung 980 Pro. But if you want to know more, follow me in this review. So today we're gonna be looking at the Kingston KC3000 in the 1TB version. I bought it on Amazon for around 110 USD dollars. I'll leave as always the links in the description below for you guys. Including the price, we also get an Acronis 3 Mage license and 5 years of warranty, as well as free technical support. As you can see, the SSD arrives in a very classical and Spartan packaging, so there is obviously not much to say about the unboxing. Once you open the package, don't throw it away because inside you will find an Acronis 3 Mage license that will come in handy for cloning your drives. Once opened, we immediately notice the very classic design, given also the absence of a heatsink. The PCB is completely black, just like modern motherboard, just like what we saw in my Sabrent Rocket review. On the top we find a graphene and aluminum label, which functions as a low-profile heat spreader, transferring the heat to the motherboard heatsinks if you have one, otherwise you can use cheap SSD heatsinks, like for example the ones I reviewed earlier in this channel. At the bottom we see a normal white label, there are some informations like model, size, serial number and so on. The Kingston KC3000 is available in different capacities, from half terabyte up to 4 terabytes. The version I reviewed is obviously the 1TB version, as I mentioned earlier. All models are able to reach 7GB in sequential read, but regarding the write speeds, the 1TB models stop at 6GB per second, while the 2TB and the 4TB versions can reach up to 7GB. The drive obviously uses the classic M.2280 format, and in this model we see we have all the memory modules on one side, while the 2 and 4TB versions have the chips on both sides. Regarding the memory used by this unit, we are talking about a Micron 176L TLC and it's a 512GB per module, it's extremely fast thanks to its 1600 mega transfers per second and is managed by a Python E18 controller that can handle memories up to 8TB. It runs at a frequency of 1GHz and is based on a triple CPU architecture. More precisely, we are talking about an ARM Cortex-R5 architecture. Helping the controller we also find two Kingston DDR4 DRAM chips that provide a total of 1GB of fast DRAM storage operating at a speed of 1600 MHz. This unit supports trim, smart and end-to-end -end data path protection but unfortunately we don't have AES hardware encryption support. The installation is extremely easy just like all M.2 units. Taking off the old drive and installing the new one will take less than 5 minutes. I would recommend to download the Kingston SSD Manager, it helps in monitoring the SSD state but I find it mainly helpful for firmware updates. But now we come to what we are most interested in, and that is pure performance. To give you a term of comparison, I compared this drive with the 1TB Sabrent Rocket, even if this is the PCI Express 3 version, and it's by the way already reviewed in this channel, so if you want you can go back and look at that video. Uh, we also be comparing this with the 512GB Kingston AS1000, and I ran all the classical tests with various benchmarks, performing different file read and write operations, mainly with AS SSD, Crystal Disk Mark and Anvil. Honestly I found it useless to do gaming load tests because there would be hardly noticeable differences in daily use. Here you can see the room temperature and the hardware used for the benchmarks. As mentioned earlier, I ran the classic tests using mainly AES SSD, Crystal Disk Mark and Anvil. All units were obviously trimmed. In order to properly test the drive, I have basically cloned the Sabrent unit into the Kingston KC3000. Therefore you'll see both units with only 30% of free disk space, but later on we will be looking also at the difference with 100% of free disk space on the unit. 
we're gonna start with Crystal Disc Mark. We can see in red the Kingston KC3000 and we clearly see it beats hands down the other two. All data is based on megabytes per second, therefore a higher score is better. In the next graph we see we are talking about a performance gain up to 470% over the Kingston SA1000, while comparing the KC3000 with the Sabrent Rocket PCI Express 3, we still see a performance gain that goes up to 180% in write speeds. For some reasons in one write scenario, the KC3000 is scoring 33% less than the SA1000. This trend continues with ASSSD, the KC3000 destroys the other two with performance gains up to almost 500%, which is crazy. The two negative values are related to access time, since it's measured in milliseconds, a lower value is better here. Moving on with the inbuilt benchmarks, also here no surprises, with gains up to 518%. In the next couple of screens we have the same benchmarks executed with the KC3000 at 30% and also at 100% of 3D space. In conclusion we can say that we have in front of us one of the fastest SSD drives on the market thanks also to the micron memories and thanks also to the top of the range controller. Also if you can find it at the price at which I bought it, it is definitely a best buy since it is basically sold at the same price as the Sabrent rocket unit that you have seen reviewed in this channel and that we have compared during this benchmark. But obviously that's a much older drive and with PCI Express 3 interface while with the KC 3000 we have PCI Express 4 support and much more recent technologies. If we really have to find the flaw here that would be the lack of hardware AES encryption. On YouTube you will find obviously other channels and other benchmarks comparing it with the fastest SSD on the market such as for example the Samsung 980 Pro but I can tell you that the KC3000 is able to beat it in almost all benchmarks even if by a very low margin. And that's everything for today's video so if you liked my review please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.